Beauty standards in the Victorian era were very different from what we consider attractive today. Maybe she's born with it. Maybe it's lead-based foundation. While some of the modern beauty standards for women might seem bizarre, they're nothing compared to the strange and often sinister norms of the Victorian era. Women were expected to have pale complexion, small waist, and long flowing hair. They also wore a lot of makeup, including white powder to lighten their skin, and red rouge on their cheeks. Despite the period's reputation for modesty, women were expected to adhere to a rigid set of beauty standards to appear pleasing to the male gaze. We'll take a moment here for a collective eye roll. Today on Mysterious Curiosity, we're examining what it meant to be beautiful in the Victorian era. But before we sharpen our eye pencils, please subscribe to our channel and let us know what odd occurrences you'd like to hear about next. You may assume that since there was a revered female queen, ladies would feel liberated to talk openly about their beauty routines and wear makeup. Not really. Makeup was seen by Queen Victoria and Victorian society at large as the scandalous attire of prostitutes and actors. According to the extremely rigid rules of society, a decent and moral lady should avoid wearing makeup at all and just look naturally beautiful. Sure. Women in the Victorian era were caught in an awful situation. They were criticized or ridiculed for applying makeup to help them appear the way they were required to look in order to be considered attractive which was a very precise way. Sounds similar, huh? Many Victorian women continued to wear makeup, but many kept it a secret as a disgraceful mystery. This caused some people to forego buying products, choosing unusual and surprisingly deadly home remedies. Others would hide makeup in mystery compartments inside their medication chests or prescription bottles. Who would have thought Estee Lauder was so James Bond? In a last step of their highly confidential makeup mission, numerous Victorian ladies applied it delicately, wanting to show up as though they weren't wearing any at all. Women were urged to become beautiful instead via their attitude and lifestyle, since the prevailing mood at the time preferred natural beauty over makeup. Daily routines were believed to give ladies the fashionable appearance of the period. For instance, going for a stroll or doing some exercise may give you pink cheeks, getting up early can give you brighter lips, and eating a light diet might help you avoid getting acne. Poor looks were attributed to unsavory characteristics like envy or sloth, as well as unpleasant hobbies like playing cards or reading books. What a terror! Victorians used a variety of strange methods in addition to behavioral modifications to enhance their natural beauty. Women used to sleep with slices of raw beef or other animal fat spread on their faces to delay the aging process. Even while it was undoubtedly filthy and revolting, this wasn't the worst of it. Women would frequently eat arsenic wafers for snacks, and even take arsenic baths, since it was advised that the poison would improve attractiveness and lighten the complexion. Victorians knew arsenic was harmful, even if the negative effects of several compounds utilized at the time weren't yet fully known. Um, am I missing something here? Even though ingesting little amounts of arsenic over time won't necessarily kill you right away, it can lead to dependence and a variety of health issues like renal and nervous system damage. That's certainly one way to seem half dead. The medical profession now has to regularly alert the public to the risks of sun harm. However, bronzers and spray tans were not desired by ladies throughout the Victorian era. Instead, maintaining a frighteningly pale skin was the major objective. The sicklier you seemed, the better. These women could lounge on their fainting couches all day instead of laboring in the sun, so their pale skin was seen as a symbol of wealth and royalty. A prevalent illness at the period, tuberculosis, also left some afflicted ladies with a death-like pallor that was actually seen lovely. Some just remained home and used parasols to hide the sun when they were out and about to acquire this desired corpse look. Face creams and powders were designed to temporarily and more permanently whiten the face for people with more devoted cosmetic regimens. Some people's everyday beauty routines actually involved smearing poison on their faces because these products frequently contained harmful ingredients like lead and the popular choice, arsenic. Many ladies drew on themselves using blue pencil to give the appearance of veins in an effort to make the skin look more transparent. That's hot. 
To the Victorian eye, any marks or freckles were undesirable. The lead-based foundation might be used as a potential solution to attempt to conceal them. However, Victorian beauty manuals advised bleaching the skin, or in extreme situations, covering the region with lemon juice or carbolic acid, and letting the area burn off your freckles in the sun. Ouch! Even if we aren't specialists, that can't be healthy for you. Long curly hair was ideal for Victorian women, since it was thought to be attractive. The only time a woman was permitted to let her hair down was when her man was around, so they had to wear their hair up, or at least half up, in elaborate styles. In reality, Victorian ladies didn't wash their hair, at least not in the way we do now. They did maintain those tresses and kept them shining by using ammonia and onion juice. The built-up grease undoubtedly contributed as well. Many Victorian ladies who were really seeking the opposite result had hair loss and scalp issues as a result of using ammonia and their overall fondness for swallowing poisons. Women utilized stray hair from their combs to construct hair rats, which they would use as a type of improvised toupee to cover bald spots or losing hair. The addition of hair accessories also added to the overall glory of their updos. Making the head as large as possible can help you get the desired look of having a waist the size of your head. That's why her hair is so big, it's full of secrets. But it doesn't mean Victorian ladies didn't also attempt to obtain absurdly tiny waist measurements. Corsets were a common piece of apparel at the period to assist ladies achieve the desired hourglass shape. Despite the fact that styles fluctuated throughout the century, these undergarments were frequently constricting and unpleasant, because ladies are, in reality, human beings, and not hourglasses. Towards the end of the 19th century, tight lacing corsets gained in favor because they made routine activities like breathing difficult. Some Victorian mothers even started tight lace training their kids forcing them into ever tighter ties in an effort to make their bodies fit the model. While the waist was cinched in, bustles and breast padding were utilized to give the appearance of additional volume in other places. In addition to strict fashion standards, there were high societal expectations for women's bodies. A lady was considered to be delightfully fat in the early to mid-Victorian era, without being too overweight or underweight. Overweight people were humiliated more and more as time went on. Women would frequently turn to risky weight loss techniques including cocaine, tapeworms, and, you guessed it, most favorite arsenic. Dark sparkling eyes, blood red lips, and rosy cheeks were regarded as lovely face traits. Of course, without a Sephora nearby, none of them were easy to do. But Victorian ladies were quite inventive. Victorian ladies frequently applied soot on their eyelashes as mascara, and blended coal or burnt toast with milk as eyeliner to darken their eyes. That elevates the smoky eye considerably. If such methods sound extreme, they were nothing in comparison to the methods used by women to make their eyes weep by squeezing lemon juice or perfume into them. Some people have even utilized belladonna eye drops, which are derived from deadly nightshade. Belladonna can, in a real sense, make you go visually blind. But what's a little long-lasting blindness in trade for a dewy, sparkly eye? Many ladies utilized beet juice for its natural color to get rosier cheeks. Additionally, ground-up beetles were a high-end lip stain option prior to the release of Kylie's lip kits. Although it sounds disgusting, at least that one did not pose a threat to life. Are you curious about the extent Victorian men would go to in order to be deemed attractive? For the most part of the era, men wore their hair shorter, and having facial hair was considered a symbol of manliness. It's simple to believe that unsafe fashion trends primarily affected women, but the fact is that men's fashion was as puzzling and dangerous. Mercury was frequently employed in the manufacture of men's hats, because it was used to soften the hair of rabbits and other tiny animals. Once more, individuals who made the hats were most vulnerable, and suffered the most, suffering from a variety of physical and mental adverse effects. Doesn't that give the phrase Mad Hatter a whole new meaning? Additionally, wealthy and stylish men who wore detachable collars occasionally died from their exquisite decisions. 
To keep the collars rigid throughout the day, starch was added to them. Men who overindulged in alcohol were more likely to pass out, suffocate, and die. Yup, that's pretty much all of it. While self-poisoning could be going too far, beauty may be painful. If you were living in the Victorian era, would you be content or would you choose to be an ugly novel-reading beast? Let us know in the comments. We are certain about our choice. That concludes this episode of Mysterious Curiosity. Please like this video and subscribe to our channel if you learned something new. And let us know what historical period or event you'd want us to explore next time in the comments.